Now the Uluru people of northeast Arnhem Land, they talk about the Moon Man. Now the Moon is often seen as a man in many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. Now for the Uluru people, they spoke of Nalindi, the Moon Man. They say that as Nalindi passes the horizon of a night time during when the moon is setting, that Nalindi actually empties heaps of water onto the earth, into our oceans. Uh, and this, of course, produces the high tides that we see. Yeah, and conversely, uh, they also say that when Nalindi rises again, that he scoops up all of that water again. And so then we have the low tides. Yeah, beautiful. So we can see how these tides and the, um, the effect of the moon on the tides is really being captured in this story. Now, the Ulanu people describe this story a little bit further. They describe Nalindi in a particular way. They say that Nalindi had several wives and when Nalindi would take on too much water, his wives didn't like this too much. So much so that they would chase him during this period of his cycle uh, and they would punish him. They would start chopping bits off him um, and chopping him into pieces uh, with their axes. Now, of course, this is corresponding to the different phases we see of the moon in our night sky as it goes through its monthly cycle. Now, they also say that eventually Nalindi escaped the wrath of his wives, uh, but he still, he still died. He was still too injured um, to survive. However, now this, this death of Nalindi is referring um, to a particular stage of the moon cycle, which is the new moon. They then go on to say that a few days later, Nalindi rose again, growing fatter uh, than ever. Um, and this, of course, is representing the waxing phase of the moon cycle. Yeah, so this story uh, clearly connects um, the, this Nalindi with the phases of the moon. Mm -hmm. But we're also with this story um, connecting the phases of the moon with the tides. Mm. Um, and so perhaps, um, you know, when we see the, the highest tides occur, well, that's when we see this new moon. Mm -hmm. uh, and then conversely, when we see the, the, the low tides, that's when we see the full moon. So perhaps we can explore that idea a little bit more and find out why the phases of the moon are actually tied to the, um, the tides. So to explain this, what is happening here, we must consider something called gravity, of course. Now, gravity is a force that weakens with distance. So as you travel further away from an object, the gravity you experience from that object is weaker as you travel further. Now, this force is called a tidal force. And as the moon is quite a bit smaller than the Earth, it doesn't have a great deal of gravity or its um, gravity pull isn't huge, but it does have a little bit. Exactly. And when we see the, the moon and the sun sort of being on opposite sides of the Earth, um, which is the point in the cycle where we see the new and, and the full moon occurring, the the Earth is um, having a, a pulling force on the moon, so it's pulling the, that face of the, the moon towards the Earth. But the same thing is happening the other way around. So the moon's face, it pulls on the Earth. And in doing so, it sort of pulls the Earth into a sort of football shape, sort of like we see in this picture behind us. And that um, is the, the effect that we're having where we're seeing these tides. Yeah, great. So we see this football shape. And what this really says to me is that the all new description of connecting the tides uh, to the moon and the moon phases is really a great way to explore this phenomena of gravity and tidal force.